This is what the sky looked like before the changes that I made, just to give you a reference on what I'm referring to. Right here, this is where the sky would normally meet up with the ground right here. Exactly, pretty much, or at least very close to it. However, from the height of the air taxi, the sky would actually be shifted down slightly. And from a much higher vantage point, I'm going to do that super jump just to give you an idea more quickly. Right now, you should easily start seeing the curvature of the Earth at this point. And at this point, or right here where it joins up with the ground, this will be a lot brighter than this. And the stars will actually be coming in gradually downward instead of all in one big chunk like that. And as another reference point, this is the dusk sky. I had the white point up a little too high. It's coming down to about here. The yellow is here, but it's going down to about there. So it's actually to better mimic re the real world. And just for that idea again, here you should easily see the Earth curvature going on, and the stars should easily be visible, a whole lot more easily visible. But that's just the basic idea. Next, I'll show you the real thing, after all the changes. Pop Quiz! When was the last time you played a video game that has both a sky darkening effect and an earth curvature effect? Yes, that's right, earth curvature effect. You'll get to see it, and boy is it amazingly realistic overall. At first glance, however, it really doesn't seem like there's anything different. However, as you, of course, you go down, you can see that the horizon's very, very flat, committing suicide there. But if you go up, things are a little different. At first, it really just don't seem like there's anything going on. But at this kind of height, this really just ain't enough to really to see the effect too well. But you can start noticing that the sky is a little darker than it used to be. And the beautiful sunset sky, and dawn sky as well, for sunrise, also has changed quite a bit too. And in this case, it's actually a lot more realistic than what it used to be, taking after what I actually saw. At first glance, here of course, you're right next to the horizon, you really don't see anything special. Going up, of course, you really don't see too much changing right before your eyes. But if you look very closely, you can actually see this shifting downward very gradually. I'm keeping the mouse cursor in exactly the same spot. Notice how that white has shifted downward some? And also, if you look closely at the very top of the screen right here, you can see that it's been noticeably darkened. It's still kind of hard to see the curvature, but you can actually see it at this point. It's kind of faint. For the best effects, there's no better way than to get up incredibly high, and thus, the Sentis Mountains. There's, well, for one, I love the way this white peeks up into this nice, deep, dark blue there. Isn't that just so pretty? And the scene is overall very pretty as well, which is pretty much nothing new. Yes, I'm doing that special jump, frame advance. And now I need cycle advance. Yep, I remembered that. You can surely see something going on in the sky, but it's very difficult to see unless you really crank up the altimeter a lot. And when I mean a lot, I'm not joking. I really mean a lot. Okay. Now, around here at this point, you can start to kind of see a curvature. This is about roughly the highest point for actually standing on top of a mountain that you'll be able to reach. It's actually slightly lower than that. But you, there's actually a plan for making a level that's even higher than this. In fact, that level takes you to about this point. Here you can clearly see the curvature although it's not very significant. And if you look closely, the stars, already at only about the height of Mount Everest. Yeah, this is about the kind of curvature you'll see on top of Mount Everest. Now, for really bringing out that curvature, there's only one thing you can do, and that is time to go up. And the stars are coming in ever more gradually. 
I change the whole sky system around so that it works with the curvature effect, among other things. So what about even higher than this, considering this is already ridiculously high to begin with? Well, that is going to require changing my jumping, the a jumping ability that is. If you look closely here, you can actually see that the whole sky has shifted. Why is that, you're probably wondering? Well, that's actually pretty easy. The camera is always looking for exactly the same spot in the map at all times. And I'm going to get ready for a super high speed fall. And I'm also going to go a lot over to the left. But since the camera is always looking at exactly the same spot, always looking at the same angle at all times, but because the Earth is curved, here you have the ball shape right there. You're actually looking straight across and then down. That's why you get this shift in the sky right there. Just envisioning how things are, and there you have it. You can see the sky darkening or getting brighter in real time there. Yeah, I know, 2,000 mile an hour, nothing new there. So, let's go upgrade that jump, and then some. With jumps set to 1,024, let's see what happens. That's 1,024 coordinate units per frame, which is 6144 mile an hour, plus the speed of this. Ready? Here goes. Can you see the curvature starting to form in real time? Here it is, you can see it. It does take an awful lot of height, however, in order to really see the effect, but here you can clearly start seeing it. The stars don't come in for quite some time, but they should be coming in almost any moment. Uh, let's see, yep, right there, I see them. And as the height keeps on increasing, then, of course, right about the there's about the threshold of outer space, the international definition. As far as going up even higher, I'm going to really have to crank up the jumping even more. But for now, I'm going to do another dusk sky. And thus, the beautiful sunset, Brugen Reef. Stars coming in real fast, much faster than they were before and the curvature is very obvious and really stands out but you can see that shifting in real time so you're probably wondering what's with all these odd lines and stuff well that comes from pixel imprecision I can't have a fraction of a pixel it has to be an exact integer and thus that's where that's coming from pretty neat, don't you think? You can actually see how there's a galaxy right here. This is just a placeholder for the stars at the moment. I do, once I get the overworld done, intend on getting the actual stars done. But here you can see the envelope of the Earth itself. So, let's go higher. A lot higher. You want to see the sky maxing out? Here it comes. How extreme of a jump am I referring to? Okay, how about 32,768 coordinate units per frame? Yeah, basically that's 32 times the width of the screen here in one frame. One frame. That's the distance of one frame. Now, what does that look like in real time going that fast? This is what it looks like. You can see the curving in real time. This is about the height of the International Space Station, in case you're wondering on that. And up and up he goes. Goodbye, Earth. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> yeah, I'm being a little funny there. And here, kind of about at this point, this is about 1,500 kilometers above the Earth. Oh yes, seriously. I'm going to change the distance units just so you can see that. Since this is my default, I'm going to revert back to that. Yes, you can change the measurement units. I just thought I'd do that just to give you the idea of what 1500 kilometers looks like. But here, well, hmm, that Earth is really getting to be pretty obviously spherical, don't you think? 
Remember, the camera is looking at exactly the same spot straight across, right exactly 384 pixels straight down from the top, or straight up from the bottom. And yet, because he's going up so much and the Earth curves so much, it's shifted so much downward. If you thought Earth's scale at, in the space bases of 131072 was nuts, this is about one million. Yeah, look how slow that's going, even at this crazy speed. And the Earth is completely off the view, but the sky is still there. How much height does it take to get the sky off the view? Well, this is only but a start. Seriously. It's actually about four, or probably about two and a half to three times that height. That is some serious height when you think about it. But hey, the atmosphere is pretty much completely gone. As far as other settings go, well, the dusk sky is no different. Watching it change in real time. Isn't this just such an amazing feature? Who's ever thought a platformer would get something like this? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? You can clearly see the envelope of the Earth around the atmosphere around the Earth. What about night sightings? Well, Carnivalesta. Uh, okay, what happened to the stars? Well, like the previous setting or system that I had before, you can't see them because you got all these lights and stuff drowning out all the stars. But if you go up, that gradually fades in. At the moment, I'm using that same placeholder image for the stars. However, crank up the altimeter and you can clearly start seeing that this curves around and there you have it. Earth curves even in that time too. This video was created by Ella Lilia. Thank you for watching. Oh, and I just gotta do this. What is it? This. Yeah, note that extreme speed.